I will call the meeting of the DuPage County Board Economic Development Committee to order on February 16th um, at 8.30. Um, a physical quorum of the members is not present, however, pursuant to Section 70 of the Mo Open Meetings Act, members are permitted to attend remotely. Either one member of the committee, the chief administrative officer, or our legal counsel are physically present in the regular meeting room. In-person attendance and public comments are allowed subject to the attendance limita limitations required to ensure the health and safety of all those who attend. So um, now we just need to do a roll call, Ms. Everett, please. Okay. Chavez? Here. Selman? Here. Renahan? Here. Eckhoff? Here. DeCiani? Here. Rutledge? Here. Okay, wonderful. All right, and now um, can I entertain a motion to approve the minutes for the Economic Development Committee meeting on January 19th of 2021? So move, any. Second, okay. Rutledge. Great, are there any questions or comments or amendments? All right, seeing none, um, Ms. Everett, can we please call the roll again? Sure, Chavez? Aye. Chairman, or Selman? Aye. Renahan? Aye. Eckhoff? Aye. DeCiani? Aye. And Rutledge? Aye. Okay, wonderful. So I just have a few brief uh, Chairwoman's updates this morning. Um, first, I want to thank the DCVB Choose DuPage and WorkNet for all working collaboratively to complete the SWOT analysis for the strategic plan. I've spoken with several of our county staff and county board members and uh, many of them contributed. So thank you for all doing your part to make this all come together. I wanted to let everyone know that because of the CARES money the DCVB received, they were able to contract with an online platform to host conferences virtually during the pandemic. So the first event is going to be a wedding showcase, which will be on March 14th. Um, the interesting thing, and I think is kind of cool, is that the proceeds will go to Giving DuPage, um, the People's Resource Center, and the Special Olympics. So thanks to them. Of course, we all want to do what we can to support our hospitality industry. So we do need to help them sustain during the pandemic. So I also want to draw your attention to the Frida Kahlo event. And I hope that you can all do what you can to support them so through social media. Um, we know that this event might not be what we'd hoped it would be as far as size and scale, but um, I think it'll demonstrate a good hope and recovery effort for our area. We've seen through the Monet event down in Chicago that we can host these events safely and within the guidelines through timed ticket sales. Um, and then lastly, there is the Morton Arboretum event, human plus nature. Um, so please look for that as well. And I think by next month's meetings, we'll have more information on the federal funding. So we'll look forward to that. So that's all I have for Chair's remarks. Do we have any public comment? We do not. Okay, wonderful. So our next item is informational on the incumbent worker training memo. Um, do we have any staff that can speak to this? All right, well, I know Oh, least you're muted. Sorry, sorry. Um, yes, this is um, another, you know, great um, example of an incumbent worker training grant for manufacturer in our area. What we really liked about this particular project is that they promote from within. So they've taken production individuals and elevated their careers into supervisory and the management track. Um, but there's obviously some training that is needed to make that a successful transition. So um, that's the, the majority of the training involved in this project. Wonderful, thank you. There was a lot of good information in our packet. So thank you for coordinating all that. I think it'll be a great success. So thank you. Thanks. All right, next we have grant proposal notifications, which I believe doesn't need a motion. Is that correct? We are just reviewing it in the first step before we move to resolution. Okay, so this is the grant proposal notification for GPN 014-21, uh, um, which is the Trade Adjustment Assistance Program for the Illinois Department of Commerce. And it is in the amount of $400,832.75. And I think it's on our agenda this way to see if there's any discussion. Does anyone have any discussion here? I had a question. Sure, Member Eckhoff. 
Thank you. Um, usually with, maybe I'm reading that grant proposal notification wrong, but it seems like the notifications dated February 2, 2021. And it, I thought we usually got the notification prior to application and usually months in advance. And I was just, I'm assuming 7A goes along with 8A. That's what I was assuming as well. So I just didn't know why the notification, I don't want to say it's late, but how, how were we so lucky to get the grant so quickly after the application? So um, Carmi, you can jump in on this um, as well. Carmi Cyrus from our finance department is here, but the, the trade um, trade grants run differently. Um, you might recall from previous meetings going back a ways that we, these are not um, formula dollars that come in through an allocation. They're applied for specifically for um, an exact dollar amount of people that have already been served and are in process of being served. So the timeline's a little different. Carmi, do you wanna speak to, you're, and you're muted. Do you want to speak to um, why that timeline is different than what we typically see with the formula grants? Okay, um, so typically the TAA grant um, would start October 1 and then ends in September. Um, for this year, um, there had been a change with the t how the TAA grant had been, um, what's, what's in the TAA grant before um, this, this grant does not pay for case management and also the overhead costs. And then they, did, they make a change such that the TAA grant will pay for case management and also, and also some admin money. Now that change created a delay on the DCEO side to send us you know, the application documents. So we started uh, working on the application in December. And there were still a lot of questions as to how to fill up the new template. Um, finally, we were able to do the application in January. And because there has already been a delay, when we sent out the application, um, DCEO acted on it right away. So it only took them like uh, a week, couple weeks to give us back the agreement. So, um, like, um, yeah, we got lucky. I was going to say, one. we did get lucky. We um, did get lucky. Because, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because, I mean, it was already delayed, so they have to act quickly. And um, because our ED meeting, the committee meeting happens only once a month. So when we sent out the notif notification um, in a perfect world, you know, they would have a meeting and then it would go to an agenda. But because we only have a meeting once a month, um, we got the notification and the same agenda as when we have the agreement and the resolution. Yeah. But we, we got lucky on this one. I hope yeah. it will be like that, you know, with the other grants. I'd, I'd say so. Well, thanks. I had one other question was when I looked at the amount of the grant and the amount that was going for administration, it seemed like there were only uh, 13 people being trained pursuant to the grants, is that correct? Um, I think on this agreement, there were like um, 64 people. Or I thought there were 58 employees, but I thought they said only 30, 13 were being trained. It just seemed, if that's correct, it seemed a little $30,000 per person, but maybe I read it wrong. I can't no. pull it up. No, the training, the training uh, budget is two hundred twenty-seven thousand. So, and do we know how many people that I, include the covers? I didn't quite hear that. Yeah, there's more. Um, I can't pull up the the packet for some reason here to access them. Well, well, can... know that we, had, we had 63 trainees, um, 63 participants that were included in that grant. Um, and that's how they we, we slice it out. But we can get back, to, you know, if you want, after the meeting, we can clarify shoot, that point. Yeah, just shoot me an email. 
Yeah, I'll do that. Um, I'm having trouble for some reason pulling up the the actual um, the actual grant app here. All right. Well, thank you. All right. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on this item? Okay, great. Well, then let's move to its resolution, which is for FIR 0151-21, um, acceptance and appropriation of the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity Trade Adjustment Grant um, for the amount of $400,833. Can I get a motion in a second, please? I'll move. Second. Second. All right, Ms. Everett, will you please call the roll? Chavez? Aye. Selman? Aye. Renahan? Aye. Eckhoff? Aye. Luciani? Aye. And Rutledge? Aye. Okay, the motion passes. So we'll also vote on um, resolution EDR 0152-21, approval of issuance of payments by the DuPage County to training providers through the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity. This is an intergovernmental agreement number 19-661006 in the amount of $227,218. May I please have a motion and a second? Move DC any. Second, Rutledge. All right, is there any discussion on this one? All right, seeing none, Ms. Everett, will you please call the roll? Chavez? Aye. Selman? Aye. Renahan? Aye. Eckhoff? Aye. Luciani? Aye. And Rutledge? Aye. Okay, the motion passes. So we're moving on to EDR 015621 resolution for the DuPage County Convention and Visitors Bureau designation of representation for grant purposes. Is, oh, may I get a motion and a second? Motion DC any. Second, Solomon. And is there any discussion? All right, seeing none, let's call the roll. Chavez? Aye. Solomon? Aye. Renahan? Aye. Eckhoff? Aye. Luciani? Aye. And Rutledge. Okay, wonderful. The motion passes. Um, so now we can move on to our presentation for today. And so I would like to take this time to introduce Shafali Trevetti um, from Giving to Page, our public private sector partner, um, which many of us know and love is the county's volunteer center. Ms. Trevetti has served as the executive director and joined Giving DuPage in 2013. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Ms. Trevetti. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's lovely to see you all and thank you so much for this opportunity to just um, chat and reconnect about Giving DuPage. Um, for those who may not be familiar with sort of how we got started, um, about 20 years ago, uh, two local philanthropists um, approached the county to um, form, uh, sort of offer the, the service of connecting people and promoting civ civic engagement. So connecting people to giving back locally and promoting civic engagement. And the main purpose for this is that there are thousands of nonprofit organizations in DuPage County, but um, one person may be very invested in supporting causes with seniors and other another individual wants to give back um, at pet shelters and a third one wants to give back with organizations that are providing housing solutions. So how do people connect to the causes that they care about? And that is the main role that we, for which we were started. And the then county board approved having um, this, this role um, in the county structure. And again, our function is to connect volunteers and donors with local giving. And that is the, the core of our work is to be that connector. Um, we also provide some capacity building training and resources for um, several hundred DuPage nonprofit partners. Um, and that's sort of just an extra thing that has sort of grown out of our work. Within the county structure, we report to Mary Keating, who's the director of um, community services. And then we formalized as a 501c3 um, somewhere along the line, just so that we could sort of engage in more programs and participate in um, supporting, having funding for those programs without having an extra burden to the DuPage County um, general fund budget. So that is, um, that is why we became a 501c3 as well. And that's where the public-private partnership came into play. 
for this um, purpose, I'm going to talk about the Giving to Page programs that um, really focus as where we are a resource for businesses, as well as for any corporate social responsibility or employee volunteer programs. Um, so we are, uh, we do serve the public, right? And not just individuals and families, schools, base groups, community groups, um, but also the business community. And one of the ways that we really, um, I think, serve as a resource for the business community, as many companies try to um, engage their volunteer, their employees in volunteerism. We host a, um, a website called the Volunteer Portal. It's a website dedicated to volunteering in DuPage County. I'll show you in a quick demo what that site looks like in a minute. Um, but I, but I think the the way that we're a resource, and we get a lot of calls and emails year round um, for companies who have employee volunteer programs. As you know, a lot of the larger corporations really invest heavily in their corporate philanthropy and they have really turned to volunteerism as another sort of um, aspect of that uh, philanthropy program. And um, I get calls a lot from people who, who say, gosh, I didn't know you existed. Uh, I've been calling nonprofit organizations and trying to figure out if we can volunteer at their place. And really, because we have these relationships with the nonprofit organizations, we are able to um, very easily, let's say, support a, an employee group who wants to volunteer at Navistar, and they want to um, organize a day of volunteering for 50 employees, um, and uh, and we can connect them based on what they want to do. Uh, that that works out pretty easily, and works out where again we're that resource so that those companies don't have to sort of try to find a way or an in inroad to the nonprofit organizations. And, and they don't even know all the nonprofit organizations where they could volunteer. Um, the second program that we offer is a board match program, um, which is a way to connect um, individual candidates. Uh, we recruit, match, and place individual candidates for nonprofit board service. This turns out to actually be a very good professional development opportunity for employees. A lot of companies um, use their future leaders to sort of say, hey, we want to, you know, cultivate your professional path. And usually a nonprofit board service experience is a part of that formula. Um, we also host a program called Volopalooza. And despite its awesome name, it is not a rock concert for volunteers. Uh, not today, anyways. Um, it is, in fact, a beautiful countywide celebration of over 150 volunteers and service leaders. Um, we have found in the last several years that more and more companies are choosing to honor their employees who participate very consistently um, in their company's volunteer programs. So it turns out to be a great volunteer recognition for volunteers, of course, from the nonprofit sector, from the business sector, from the faith community. Um, and that event usually happens every fall. And finally, we um, are hosting a countywide virtual fundraiser this year with a goal um, to raise over $300,000 for 100 local charities. Um, and this is a great tie-in for companies who have a robust corporate philanthropy program, um, a way to help many charities all in one and um, charities that serve all causes from providing housing to helping kids and youth programs to um, obviously food pantries and pet shelters just runs the whole gamut. We cover a lot of causes, but so far for this year, um, right now we're in the charity sign-up phase for this event, and we have over 50 charities signed up. Um, we fully expect to have 100 or 80 to 100 charities at least um, signed up for this year. Um, and again, this is a great tie-in and a way to support many causes in one event. Um, and it is a virtual fundraiser, uh, which we started last year for the first time and are doing it again this year. Um, I will take a pause for any questions, and I'll also, um, if it's okay with um, <clears throat> Ms. Everett, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so I can do a live demo of the portal um, so that you can see that particular program in place. And I'll take any questions as well while I'm here at the site. But this is the volunteer portal website that I um, discussed. You can find it by going to givingdupage.org backslash volunteer. And you can see that we post virtual volunteering. This became obviously a reality for us um, as of last March. And also in-person volunteering that can be done safely, outdoor volunteering, 
in-kind um, donation of gifts or, or sort of items and um, different uh, ways that you can support the nonprofits with a donation of something, as well as nonprofit jobs. So if I just go to the left navigation, and I won't dive too deeply into it, certainly I'll share the link with everyone afterwards, but to sort of share the screen very quickly, you can see just right away um, some opportunities 360 Youth Services talks about various volunteer opportunities. The icon kind of describes what it is and the category that it falls under. Metropolitan Family Services needs help um, in their resale shop with a volunteer. Um, facilities Cleanup at Outreach Community Ministries. Um, Bridge Communities has a paid development internship. Um, Riverwalk Adult Day Services is literally looking for a laptop or a tablet. Um, so we try to promote these volunteer needs and if you kind of click on it, you can see a little bit more details. Um, individuals who visit the site can respond. And you can also see a profile of the organization by clicking on any of the organizations um, and see a little bit more about who they are and what they do and different ways that you can get involved. You can add photos, they can add photos and they can also add a video about them with connections to who they are. Obviously this is very share friendly. So if you click on the share button, you can share it through social networks. Um, and this is sort of, this site uh, is a great way. And by the way, all the opportunities as well as the organizations, you can search by cause, by interest. You can search within um, as a radius or a radi um, five mile radius or 10 mile radius of a zip code. Um, and you can also search by keywords and phrases. So if you just entered the word pets or youth programs or things like that, you could uh, connect to volunteering. This particular site currently is being used by over 370 nonprofit organizations locally, and they have posted over 775 needs, whether it's a volunteer need, an in-kind donation need, a job opportunity, or um, an event that they have coming up. And the site is connecting an average of about five volunteers a day. Um, and there are probably over, I wanna say, close to 5,500, but definitely over 5,000 um, volunteers and users signed up in this portal. Um, that doesn't include our separate email subscriber list as giving the page where we are um, pushing out information to over 14,000 individuals. So we try to put together a monthly newsletter um, that goes out to that larger list of 14,000 plus email subscribers. Um, and so we just put out a newsletter last Friday called, it's our community cares newsletter, where we try to pull out a couple of needs that are posted at the portal. And then we also use the portal communications to push out urgent or pressing needs. Um, for example, NAACP last year wanted to organize several hundred safety kits for communities in need. And so those are the kinds of things we try to push out in the portal. I'll go ahead and stop my share unless people want me to keep it up. Um, but I'm happy to answer any questions uh, that you may have about what we do. And I also want to take a quick um, second to thank DCVB for selecting us as one of the charities that will be benefiting from the Brighter Showcase. So thank you. We found out about that last week. And so thank you, Beth, and to you and your team. Appreciate it. Wonderful. Does anyone have any questions for Ms. Trevetti? All right. Well, thank you so much for presenting today. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, there's there's a question. I'm sorry. Yep. Uh, thank you. Thanks for catching me there. Um, just a question in terms of, of mission. Um, I'm just not sure. Is this more of a fundraising um, group? I see that with the, the DC, you know, the, with the tourist thing, there's going to be fundraising arm. I thought it was more of a connecting agency. Um, just it, can you give me some clarity on mission? Please. Absolutely. So our mission is to promote giving and volunteering countywide. We are, um, you know, that is our mission. We are here to promote volunteering in the county. Um, the, the, the reason why we are, um, we became a 501c3 is so that we could offer programs and services that we thought were filling a need without becoming, um, without adding to the county funds and the county budget, right? So right now the county budget um, covers uh, my headcount, one full-time headcount, one part-time headcount, which actually is an unfilled position right now. And, um, and obviously the county provides us the space and the resources with like a laptop and things like that. Um, we do try to fundraise as a, as a 501c3 for all of our other programs. So Valpalooza, 
as I said, we offer a lot of nonprofit training and support resources. So all of those other things are funded out of giving you pages own funds, not county funds. So all of the other things that we do in terms of programming. And so um, we do try to fundraise for our organization, but like, for example, the Giving to Page Days event, which is a fundraiser for many charities all in one, that actually got started um, several years ago. It was actually a 5K called the DuPage Human Race. Some of you may be familiar with it who have been on the board for a while. Um, that event, that 5K began as, again, a virtual, uh, like a 5K event for many charities in one. We recognized that some of our nonprofit partners were um, some of the smaller organizations didn't have the staff time and resources to host their own 5K fundraiser. In 2019, we, um, that was the last year we had the race event, and then we morphed it into this Giving to Page Days virtual fundraiser event with the same intention to have it be a fundraiser for many charities. Again, these charitable organizations, um, and especially as it turned out timing-wise last year, really needed extra support when it came to fundraising, right? So we are not a granting organization, but that is the one event that we host where we are trying to do some fundraising in support of local nonprofit organizations. But the core of our mission, Member Ranhan, is definitely about volunteering and connecting people to volunteer opportunities in the county. That is what we do, that is what we focus on, that is definitely what our purpose and our goal is. And um, I welcome opportunities for us to sort of spread the word about the fact that we exist. I think the truth is that most people don't know that we are, or we exist as a volunteer center, that we are here to connect people to volunteering countywide. Um, and that's, that's just the reality of it. I think we get lost in sort of all the different things that um, exist in terms of resources countywide. But we are the volunteer center, that is our role. We do have one event that is a multi-charity fundraiser. That's the event I described to you. And then separately, we do try to fundraise for the 501c3 arm so that we can fund all of these other programs, the volunteer recognition, the nonprofit training and resources. We do try to raise those funds on our own for those. Thank you. Oh, Member Chaplain, can I ask oh, a question? Yes, Member, Member Chaplain. Yeah, yes, thank, thanks so much. So, um, yeah, with along with your fundraising, so I know this organization has been around for a long time. Like you said, a lot of people still don't know about Giving DuPage. Um, do you ever see your organization raising um, enough money to sustain your expenses, your own <clears throat> personnel and your own office and things of that nature? I mean, is that a goal of this um, uh, uh, giving due page or, or do you ever see that becoming independent of the county um, supplement? Um, so I, I see member Solomon, member Solomon, do you want to, do you want to chime in on that or do you want me to go ahead and answer? I could just so for um, members may not know, I have the honor of serving on the Giving DuPage board. Um, fundraising is incredibly expensive work on the front end. Um, in order for us to hire someone who would do what would be considered major gift fundraising, either five and six figure gifts, which is what we would need to sustain Shafali's role um, and our operations, that's a high five-figure, six-figure job with benefits. Um, I don't see that as being in the best, um, I don't think it makes sense for the mission of giving to Paige. I think we're really lucky to have an organization that is sort of this bridge organization that brings in the nonprofit community, that brings in business partners, that brings in professionals looking to further their career, um, and find boards within their home county. I think that's such an awesome asset, especially when we have some neighbors to the east that have some attractive boards. Um, being able to keep that talent in county is, um, I think, an investment in our future. Um, I also think we get a, quite a deal <laughs> um, for how much we spend as a county versus the amount of labor we get out of Shafali. And I know David helps and um, Mary, I'm sure, has parts of her day that gets some Giving to Page attention. Um, the Giving to Page Days event that we held last year, like Shafali said, we held it for the first time 
in um, March of 2020, and we were able to exceed our goal, which was, I mean, even I was so blown away and really inspired by that at the beginning of our pandemic, that there were individuals looking to not just volunteer, which we absolutely played a role in getting volunteers for our health department or for the other departments that saw increased and crazy need in March and April. Um, but having that fundraising event that allowed us to give some dollars to our smaller nonprofits, I think probably just couldn't have been better timing. And I'm really excited about the opportunity we're going to have this spring. So that's a long roundabout way of saying that if we were to try to make this organization to stand on its own, it would just be so much more expensive. Um, and I think we would really lose that connection with the county and the sort of oversight that we get by having board members that are able to be on that board. And Shafali, of course, if you have anything to add. Oh, you're you. muted, Shafali. Um, I, I was gonna say something, but I also noticed that Mary Keating took herself a video. So Mary, if you have, before I kind of round out any answer. Um, you know, I think that the county has served as the, the, the department has served as the county's volunteer center probably since the 70s or 80s. Um, so this is not, so, you know, what we've, what we've done with uh, giving to page is really kind of boost the visibility of the volunteer center, the capacity of the volunteer center. So uh, it, it, the county has a long, uh, long and storied history of being, of serving as the volunteer center. As um, Member Selman said, uh, in order to uh, become completely self-sustaining, there would have to be a significant focus on raising um, uh, significant dollars just to replace the county investment of the headcount. Um, and then if we're talking about office space, um, uh, you know, uh, workers' comp insurance, all those kinds of things, um, we're talking about significant investment in fundraising. So um, I, it, uh, honestly, it is the will of the DuPage County Board whether or not this organization continues to receive the support from the DuPage County Board. So uh, I think the, the organization itself is very focused on fund raising funds to support all of the different programs that are run um, with what, uh, not to minimize Shefali's impact, but what I would what I would describe as a minimal investment by the county. We're talking about one and a half FTEs, uh, a couple of laptops, laptops some, uh, uh, some office space. Um, I think the return on the county's investment is, uh, is significant. I think the, the goodwill and the understanding that the county has made this investment on behalf of the nonprofit community and supporting businesses and individuals who wanna engage uh, with their community. So I think the Giving to Page Board uh, I'm no longer on it. I think I'm emeritus for life, but um, I think the Giving to Port DuPage Board certainly is focused on identifying ways to bring additional resources to Giving to Page. It's not that they take for granted for a, a minute the investment that the county makes, um, but I think the, the preference of the Giving to Page Board would be that those uh, fundraising efforts go to assist the programs and services that help boost the nonprofit organizations. Great, Th thanks so much everyone. Appreciate the um, comments, thank you. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Trevetti. I think for the interest of time, if anyone has any more questions, feel free to email her directly. Um, so thank you so much. Your presentation was wonderful and I think it was great information. So thank you so much for joining us this morning and sharing all about it. Thanks for the opportunity. Everyone be well and be safe, take care. Thank you. All right. Now moving on to um, Mr. Betelov with Choose DuPage. Do you have an update today? Thank you, Member Chavez. Uh, in the interest of time, I know that you have meetings for the remainder of the morning. I'm happy, I do have a, a presentation. We typically give a year end economic indicator report, kind of how we did from an overall economic perspective. The report is available on our website under business climate. If you want, I, I know that you have a 1030 or I was looking at the website, I believe there's a 10 o'clock. I'm happy to go over it if you want me to, if somebody wants to start sharing the screen or if you would rather uh, look at it online, as I say, it's on our website and I defer to you because I know time is of the essence. Um, I don't have a 10 o'clock or a 1030. Do any of our other members would have input on how to proceed here? 
think it's okay to, sorry, Member Chavez. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I okay, would say go ahead. just proceed. Yeah. Okay. So let's go to the next slide, please. These are our 2020 annual economic indicator report, beginning with unemployment. Again, choose DuPage is pleased to announce that DuPage County's unemployment is in line with across the U.S. 6.7% for calendar year end 2020, slightly below the rate in Illinois of 7.6%. Next slide, please. Here we always provide you all with an overview of how we're doing versus our neighboring counties. You can see that with very uh, few exceptions, some little, some higher, some lower, we're kind of right in the mix uh, between 5.1, 4.9% as high as seven and eight and nine percent, but that's just an overview of the unemployment rates by county. Next slide, please. Uh, we're also kind of providing information this year on unemployment by type, whether it's a temporary layoff or a permanent job layoff. Again, COVID made everything a little crazy this year. So we thought that you would be interested in seeing that we did have permanent job losses in April, May, and then you can see the trend down. So we're starting to see somewhat of a recovery back to what we saw earlier in the year in March. Next slide, please. Uh, this slide is showing unemployment insurance claims for DuPage County. So you can see, uh, we get this information through the Illinois Department of Employment Securities, and you can see the unemployment insurance claims for the county from the onset of COVID. And then we naturally saw things kind of trending down and kind of peaking again, uh, somewhat concerning that we're seeing that rise in unemployment insurance claims for the county. Next slide, please. We always like to inform the Economic Development Committee who our largest employers are by industry. Healthcare and social assistance remains our largest employer, followed closely by professional scientific and technical services. The retail trade from an employment sector continues to be strong in DuPage County. Administrative support and manufacturing round out our top five. What we like to say is we are a mile wide and an inch deep, which is good and it helps us sustain some economic issues. I think uh, we jumped forward a couple of slides there. Mm -hmm. oh. Next slide, please. So here's our total employment and our total labor force within DuPage County, just over 617,000 total employed and a labor force of 513,000. So that means that we're importing people into the county to work our labor force within DuPage County is not large enough to satisfy the total number of jobs within DuPage County, which is kind of a good thing. Next slide, please. So we also like to let folks know where our top job opportunities are. And I won't read them all to you, but you can see that from retail sales to registered nurses to truck and trailer uh, drivers, there are opportunities throughout DuPage County. Next slide, please. These are the things that we monitor and kind of um, internally judge ourselves on. Office vacancy rate in DuPage rose to 15%. That's no surprise. We saw that trend happening over the last couple of years and it continues to be on the rise. As we saw migration three, four, five years ago of businesses going into the city, um, the labor force, some of the work that the city had done from a tech perspective into the central business district, we're now hovering around 15% uh, and we had a class A. And for those of you who are kind of new to this office vacancy world, we have class A, class B and class C. Class A is what you would consider really nice office space. Class B is step down and class C is just glorified warehousing. Uh, we did have a negative 86.1 thousand square feet of absorption. That means that 86,000 square feet of office space became available in the market that was not previously available in the market. Next slide, please. Uh, we monitor leasing activity, the number of deals that we did and that we were involved in and that happened in DuPage County. Surprisingly, we're starting to see that tick up as we thought we would. In the second quarter of 2020, activity plummeted to less than 100 deals. We're now back up to 136 deals from Q3 of 2020. Uh, I'm sorry, that should say Q4, that last 
bar should be Q4 of 2020. I apologize for the typo. So we are starting to see some of the activity, which we thought we would see as businesses began to look for more open spaces and the perception of a little bit of additional safety for their employees with the spread of COVID and other issues. Next slide, please. We're starting to see a lot of sublet availability and sublet activity. Um, again, I don't think this is a big surprise. It almost doubled in the fourth quarter. What does that mean? That means that businesses that have office space in DuPage County and Cook County and Will County and all throughout the United States are looking to sublet their space to other businesses because they're learning that they can do virtually what we're all doing today and operate their business. So I do not expect this trend to end anytime soon. I think we're gonna to continue to see an increase in sublet activity. Next slide, please. Uh, some good news. Our industrial vacancy rate continues to drop and it dropped to 5.3%. At 5.3%, you're basically almost out of space for industrial opportunities within DuPage County. You're turning businesses away because you don't have enough available inventory. With the DuPage Business Park and with Western Access and Illinois 390 and the 127 square miles of opportunity, much of which is zoned for industrial, we would expect to see more industrial property come on the market and industrial activity would continue to increase. Next slide, please. Uh, from a retail perspective, the retail vacancy rate dropped, believe it or not, to 7.5%. Now this could be, I wanna caution everybody, this does not mean that retail activity has returned robustly to brick and mortar opportunities throughout DuPage County. This could be anything from a real estate office, a law firm, any non-retail type of business that is now occupying space that is zoned for retail. So I'm sure many of you in your hometowns see what used to be a restaurant or what used to be a store that is now occupied by a real estate firm. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of that with retail space and retail vacancy dropping to 7.5%. Next slide, please. Cost of living index continues to be a little higher than the state of Illinois and the US average at 125.1. That basically just means that the average salary, if you look on that first column, you'll see our average annual salary is higher than you see uh, in the US and higher than you see throughout the rest of Illinois. But the cost of living and the purchasing power of those dollars is normalized through a higher cost of living and lower purchasing power. Next slide, please. Gross domestic product, we began charting this several years ago and we are starting to see an increase uh, again, uptick a little bit in our gross domestic product. This is actually what businesses in DuPage County are producing year over year. So we're starting to see an increase in GDP it increased by 2.8% in 2019. This always lags one year behind the calendar year. Next slide, please. Uh, GDP by industry. So where is that production coming from? Real estate, rental, wholesale, manufacturing. Again, they're all listed right there with the dollar amount in GDP that they create for DuPage. This slide is intended to give you all an idea of what industry sectors and what industry clusters are generating GDP for DuPage County. These are industries we need to continue to support. Next slide, please. Uh, this slide is the Chicago Fed survey of business conditions. So this is uh, something that we just started doing and just started reporting on because with COVID, we're gonna to have to look at activity and how we see business conditions in terms of just overall activity. The Fed takes a bunch of data points. I won't bore you with the data points, but the Fed takes a bunch of data points, puts them into a big bowl, stirs them around, and we get an indication of our activity and the activity index within DuPage County. We saw the activity index for the region drop by 23.3% in 2020 largely due to COVID. Next slide, please. Oh, so that's the end of my end of the show. I'm happy to answer any questions. Again, the information is on our website. So if you have 
the desire to kind of get more detail on it, please feel free to check out our website or I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. All right, Member Selman. Thank you. Um, just a question, you might not have data on it yet. I've been interested in the um, trend of remote work um, and how that will impact our county. Because I, you know, I have many friends who have sure. been working in Manhattan or in Chicago that now are looking for homes either in their hometowns or in a lot of time that means coming back to DuPage County. Right. Um, just sort of what data do you think is available for us to monitor and how can we be looking at that in the next year, two years to attract those employees to make their home here in DuPage and then work wherever they're right. working? That's a great question. And Member Selman, it's also a bit of a two-edged sword. We already have some of that data and we are working very closely with the major uh, developers and the major landowners from an office perspective and a warehouse perspective and the transportation perspective. And I can tell you that currently, the number of people who are going into their buildings, if you will, every day to work is hovering around 20% in DuPage County. So when you look like when you look at an office complex like Hamilton Lakes up in Itasca, or you look at some of the office complexes along I-88, about 20% of the office space is occupied. That would indicate that the remainder and those office buildings are normally somewhere in the 85 to 90% occupied range. So that would indicate that about 70%, there's about a 70% reduction in the number of people who are working in those office buildings, meaning they are working remotely. Uh, we just began monitoring that in the fourth quarter of 2020. We'll continue to monitor it. There has really been no substantive change. I don't think any of us expected a substantive change, but there's been no substantive change to that, but we are monitoring it and it's currently, as I said, about 20%. So 80% of folks are working remotely. That could help people move out to DuPage. However, it could also just, you know, have a gigantic impact on those office buildings because those office buildings rely on, and our economy relies on those people returning to those offices, going out to lunch, leases, everything like that. I hope Thank that you. answers your question. Yeah, very much so. Thank you. Thank you. And then I see Member Rutledge in the conference room. Thank you, Chairman uh, Chavez. Kind of on the same line as Ashley's question, um, you had mentioned in your presentation that over the last couple of years, you've seen a migration of office space into Cook County. Are you seeing, because, I mean, everybody seems to want to get out of the city, out of that higher concentration of people, are you kind of seeing of a reverse of that at this point that we're seeing more people coming out to the collar counties uh, for office space? Again, great question. Um, we're seeing more questions and we're seeing more um, activity regarding that, but we are not seeing at this point an uptick in the number of leases. And that's why I put that slide up there about sublease activity. Uh, we are seeing businesses in the city looking to downsize, but we're also seeing that happen throughout DuPage County and the collars. So we are getting more calls about office space and secondary headquarters and the like. However, it's important to note that most of those leases are long-term leases. And in order for a company to break that lease, the owner and the, the landlord has to be on, on board with that. So, you know, I always like to make sure we, we at Choose DuPage don't confuse activity with accomplishment. We're getting calls, but the number of actual leases that have been signed has not increased to this point. I just, Thanks, Craig. Go ahead. All right. All right. Did that answer your question, Member Rutledge? I, okay. All right. Well, then thank you so much, Mr. Bedelov, for that presentation. And now um, let's move on to Ms. Shavak with WorkNet. Okay, thank you. Um, pull up my presentation here. Speaking of leases, you'll see I'm gonna mention something about that. Um, I can skip my first slide that I've been sharing because it looks like Choose DuPage just uh, presented the same information. I will just point out that um, as I've been since the beginning of the COVID uh, crisis that the temporary layoffs or furloughs 
um, has now reached levels lower than the permanent job loss. And so that's obviously of great importance um, to the programming that we offer. People are now, those furloughs are turning into permanent um, or the furloughs have ceased to some extent and the layoffs that are happening are due to closures or just you know, um, actual long-term implication workforce reductions. <clears throat> Um, our January snapshot, the total WIOA funds that we expended on training services in the month of January was $200 and almost $58,000. Um, <clears> you'll see here in the breakdown, the majority of that was for dislocated workers. So of course that is individuals that are eligible for collecting unemployment. Um, we did have a sizable um, amount of youth dollars that were spent. Much of that is um, on our youth subcontracts with the service providers that we contract out with. And then um, adult, our 1A grant is significantly lower. And this is a challenge that we've been experiencing. Um, we have different strategies in place to reach low income individuals or other individuals that might qualify for our 1A grant at this time because we are spending at a, sig a significantly reduced pace uh, for that particular grant. Um, I also included here some numbers, uh, the total new clients that we connected to our services or those of our partner organizations for the month of January was 175. We funded 22 new individuals for training um, and we had two newly hired contact tracers uh, through our office at the health department for the month of January. And you can see here the occupation and training categories. The majority um, was a tie in the month of January between IT and healthcare. Those are the sectors that we uh, are training individuals in or to pursue employment within. And then we also had um, four individuals received uh, funding to get their CDL licenses and four that were in the admin other category, uh, two individuals training for the manufacturing industry for the month of January. Uh, on my next slide here, these are some things that we have in the works that I wanted to bring to your attention. The first is um, I'm working on coordinating and connecting Just of DuPage that I know you're uh, likely all very familiar with that has been uh, providing different vocational training within the county jail. We've done some projects with them previously. Um, I recently made a connection between Just of DuPage and one of our approved training providers, which is Associated Builders and Contractors. So we're exploring uh, the possibility of bringing some carpentry and construction related training inside the jail uh, for the benefit of um, appropriate and interested county jail um, inmates. Another thing that we're doing uh, is pre-apprenticeship program. We're gonna be issuing a new youth contract soon for an organization called Resilient. They are focused primarily on serving youth along the Roosevelt uh, Corridor in Villa Park uh, in that area there. They're looking to connect um, opportunity youth and underrepresented uh, youth into pre-apprenticeship programming for the skilled trades. And that's a, a critical need for our workforce as well. Uh, another significant project that I'll be keeping you all updated on, um, working on developing and connecting again, serving as that connector uh, between our employer partners, specifically Edward Elmhurst Health and Northwestern Medicine. Um, we convened recently a meeting between those two organizations and the College of DuPage, as well as ourselves, um, and are discussing potentially developing and launching a nursing apprenticeship for DuPage County, which would be a significant victory. There's not a lot of successful uh, nursing apprenticeship models nationally yet. Uh, and so we were looking to hopefully be kind of a pioneer in that regard. Um, and those, those discussions are ongoing. And um, we're also doing, I mentioned how we're struggling somewhat with our 1A grant um, and, and utilizing those dollars at this time. We're going to be doing info sessions in conjunction with uh, the Regional Office of Education to reach at-risk um, families or families that have students in particular types of programming. We're gonna be doing those in English and Spanish uh, the beginning of March. So we're excited about that opportunity. And then a couple things I wanted to just put on your radar, again, things that I'm going to be uh, mentioning or that will be coming before this committee at some point in the coming months. One is that we are, um, and we have been for some time now, uh, got kind of interrupted with COVID and we picked it up again, but um, our lease for our office space at 2525 Cabot Drive is up at the end 
of November of this year. Um, and so we're in process of renegotiating that lease as well as exploring some other potential office space. That process is moving forward, um, but I just kind of wanted to put that out there because um, again, it's gonna be something that will be uh, reaching some sort of culmination and brought to the committee at some point in the coming months. The other is um, HB 2170, which was, um, which was passed during the lame duck session of the um, Illinois General Assembly. The only reason why I put this on here is because um, there's a lot up in the air with this, but there was language in that, uh, in that piece of legislation regarding consolidation of WIOA funded programming. And um, it might have an impact on which state agency serves as our pass through and, and serves as uh, the state entity that we report up to. So it could switch potentially from DCEO to a different agency. Um, and that would obviously have, you know, wide ranging implications for the implementation of our programs and it could disrupt grant, um, you know, pass throughs and things like that. So um, that is still, like I said, to be determined, there's a feasibility study being conducted at the state level right now on ways to potentially streamline or changes that uh, they might be interested in making. So I will keep the committee uh, updated on, on that if there's anything to report moving forward. And I think that was my last. Oh, and, and as always, um, there's a link here to our website for sharing, you know, information with businesses or job seekers that might reach out to you for, for information. Great. I will stop sharing. Thank you so much. Are there any questions? All right. Wonderful presentation. Thank you so much. Um, so now uh, moving on, do we have any old business? I just had two under that. I wanted to thank member Renahan for bringing up um, at last month's meeting, the information on the diversity awareness that had been um, started under um, former member Eckhoff, or not Eckhoff, pardon me, Elliot. And um, so we got that rolling under an ad hoc. So I wanted to thank you for getting those wheels turning. And I think it'll be great because it will really involve this committee as well as strategic planning. So member um, Covert and I are working on those details now. So we'll have more to present later. And then I also wanna thank member Rutledge um, for helping me to get in touch with Hope um, and uh, Evelyn Sanguinetti will also be presenting presenting at our next meeting. So thank you, Member Rutledge, for that as well. So that will be coming up in next month's meeting. Anyone else have any old business? All right, seeing none, any new business? All right, looks like we're good to go. Can I get a motion? Oh, we do? I'm sorry. Oh, sorry about that, Ms. Marchetti. I just wanted to say thank you to the committee for our resolution. Um, this is the piece of paper that allows us to get the state hotel grant back on the local level. So I wanted to say thank you real quickly for that. Um, I also wanted to say thank you to Lisa Shavak. She presented two weeks ago at our hotel, restaurant and banquet facility meeting, just offering all the great resources that DuPage County has as we move some, uh, sadly, from some furloughed, uh, temporary furloughed employees to permanently furloughed employees. Um, I also wanted to let the committee know that um, both in the House and the Senate, they have resurrected the tourism committees. Um, Sarah Feigenholtz from Chicago heads up the tourism committee in the Senate. And Susie Gloyak Hilton, thankfully, has agreed to represent DuPage County um, on the tourism committee. So that's great news for us um, as a senator represents over 5,000 hotel rooms in the county in her area. In the House, Lamar Robinson is chairing that committee. And I'm pleased to say that Ann Williams from Chicago, who is the former chair, and Tara Costa Howard from DuPage County are, are serving on that committee as well. So there'll be some great representation on that. And um, that's all I had. I just wanted to thank the committee for their support. I appreciate it greatly. Of course. And thank you so much, Ms. Marchetti. I know that you and I have been working behind the scenes and your efforts to help our hospitality effort, um, industry have been just so tremendous. So thank you. And thank you to everyone who's all kind of overlapping and working together. Thank you to you all for helping us give that industry the boost that it needs right now. All right. Any other old business or I guess we're on new, sorry, new business. All right, now I think we might be good to go for an adjournment. May I get a motion and a second? Rutledge, so moved. Second. second. 
All right, Ms. Everett, please call the roll. Chavez. Aye. Selman. Aye. Renahan. Aye. Eckhoff. Aye. Luciani. Aye. And Rutledge. Aye. All right, it looks like we are adjourned. Thank you everyone for all your efforts today and we'll see you next month. Thank you, have a great day. Bye-bye.